In this lesson, I'll show you how to compute the moment of inertia using integrals. The question reads, compute the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its base. So we'll start with question A. And this question is a generic inertia type problem with integrals, where we don't have numbers, we're just working with letters. To compute the moment of inertia for this particular case, we draw a single strip of an area that is parallel to the axis about which we are taking the moment. So the base of this rectangle is right here. And so we'll take the area of strips that have a known width of A and an unknown height or length of dy. Now since we're taking rectangles all throughout the y-axis, we have to do it with respect to the y. So the area of these strips can be shown as dA is equal to the known width of A times its height of dy. All points on the strip are at a distance y from the x-axis. So the moment of inertia about the x-axis will be represented like this, where we start with this formula, the moment of inertia of an area. And just to understand what this formula is telling us, I represents the moment of inertia, A represents the area, and we know the area is right here, namely the integral of this part. All represents the distance at which this line is taken from the base, and the distance is unknown, so we'll just call it y. R will be replaced with y. A will be replaced with the following expression, and we're taking the derivative of this expression with respect to y. And since it's relative to the x-axis, we'll write down the derivative of i subscript x is equal to the area, which is a times dy. I won't write them together because I want to write down r beside the a. r represents the distance y to the power of 2 and then the dy. Now, to compute the moment of inertia, what we have to do is take the integral of this function. So by taking the integral, I end up with i subscript x is equal to a is a constant times the integral between 0 and b, the length of this rectangle, y to the power of 2 dy. The integral of y to the power of 2 is y to the power of 3 over 3. And we'll find out what this is equal to when y is equal to b and when y is equal to 0. Substituting b into here, we end up with b to the power of 3 over 3 minus substituting 0 into here gives us 0. And so the moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to a b to the power of 3 over 3. Let's move on to question b. In question b, they want us to find the radius of gyration for the rectangle. Let's talk about this for a moment. If all of the area in a plane figure were squeezed into a single thin strip of equal area and placed parallel to the x-axis at such a distance that it had the same moment of inertia as the original rectangle, it would be at a distance r that we call the radius of gyration. That being said, if we solve for r in the moment of inertia formula that we had earlier, we should end up with r is equal to the square root of i over a. And we use r subscript x and r subscript y to denote the radii of gyration about the x and y axis respectively. So since we are finding the moment of inertia along the x axis, we will write down rx, r subscript x, square root of our moment of inertia, which is this a, b to the power of 3 over 3, over the area of the whole figure, which happens to be a times b, length times width. Because this time we're taking the area of the total figure. What will happen here is the a and the b will cancel out, leaving us with 2 here. And the square root of b squared is b over the square root of 3. And there you have it. That is how to compute the moment of inertia using integrals.